Hi, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my channel. This is a series of videos where I assemble and set up an Oosnest WorkBee 2.3 CNC router machine. If you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, I urge you to go back and do so, as some things may not be carried across from one video to the other and some things may not make sense unless you watch it in the entirety. This is not a sponsored video by Oosnest. I have paid for this machine completely with my own money and there's been no discount or anything. I have, however, arranged for an affiliate link with Oosnest, and if you're interested in purchasing a work bee from Oosnest, then please urge you to follow the link below. I'll put it across the screen here, but also I'll put a link in the description as well. And if you do use the link, then I will get a small commission, and it does help to support the channel. So let's get on with the video. Right, so onto the limit switch assembly mounting. Now we're gonna start with the X, and you're gonna need this plate here. Is it's got an X on it. it. Needs to be orientated with a slot at the top and the X at the front. We're then going to take these two or two of these little screws. They're called plasticite screws. We're also going to need the limit switch itself, and this is the one which has got the black tag of zero at the end. You need to be careful when you're attaching these because if you put too much force on it, you can break the switch. So let's go careful. So I'm gonna start by lining it up and it needs to be orientated with the silver lever pointing upwards. So in my example with the red at the top and the black at the bottom. And I'm gonna turn it over Put a screw in. Let's get my screwdriver at the ready first. Now the instructions suggest that you tighten it in and then back it out a little way and then tighten it in and then back out a little way and you just keep repeating that until you get it all the way in. Let's get the other one in as well. It's quite fiddly, you probably want to do this over at your bench really. It's kind of okay once it gets started. Now there is a small amount of gap and a bit of play in there, so do just make sure that it's all lined up nicely. Then gonna take one of the eight mil bolts and drop it in through the slot. And on the back of that, one of the little drop in T-nuts, making sure that the grooves are towards the head of the bolt. And just put a turn or two on just to hold it in place. And then we're going to attach it. The position for this is on the back of the X gantry towards the left hand side when you're looking at it from the rear. And using the drop in bolt, it just goes into the top, hold it up against that plane and hold it square as well. And just tighten it up. Right, so for the Y section, it's exactly the same. Install the switch, which we already had connected up down here anyway. And then what it does is you could put it onto the top you see that we've got this L shape and that kind of snugs into that corner. So we need to put it onto the C beam. Now I've noticed I've wrapped my cable around the bottom. Um, I don't know if that's what you're meant to do. We haven't got to that sort of part yet, um, but it kind of feels like a good place to put it for me anyway. So let's just give that a little tighten up. Right, so now for the Z section, um, I've already done that in previous steps. Uh, so if you've come here looking for that, I'm afraid you'll have to go back. But anyway, let's move on to the next chapter. Right, so onto the wire routing now. Now for the Z axis, I've already run this cable. I did it earlier um, as part of an earlier step, but what you can see is it goes up the side of this plate and there's a couple of cable ties that just hold it in place. I've also put a couple of drops of hot glue on it just to prevent it from getting in the way um, in case it moves and catches on the drag train. Some people suggest putting tape over it, um, but by the time I'd realized that I'd already got it hooked up, so it was a bit late for me. But hopefully that'll be okay, and I've put one drop just here, so that if the drag chain does move across, it will start to rub on the glue first, which hopefully will prevent it from getting to the cable. Right, so now it's time to connect this stepper motor up, and we've got the black cable here, and we've got the connector, and all we need to do is just press them together. Just need to know that one side of this connector is flat, and the other side it's got a little sticky out tab, and the tab needs to coincide with the little lever that's on this side. So let's just press them together. Right, and they should click into place, which that has. 
You need to make sure that there's enough slack for it all. There's probably a little bit too much here, um, but I'll sort that out when I tidy everything up a bit later. Right, so now that's connected, I've just made sure that there's, it's nice and secure, nice and tight. There's not lots of flex. Um, at this stage, it's quite easy to pull these cables from the other end of the drag chain. But now I'm going to just put this cable tie in through the holes and put it around the cables. And I'm not going to do it up too tight at the moment. I'm just going to use it just to sort of roughly secure them in place. Once the router's moved around a few times and the CNC's been up and down on its paths, I will look to secure that better and, of course, trim off the excess. But that just holds it in place for the moment. Now, to secure the cable for the limit switch, I'm going to use another cable tie. I'm just going to run it up around the back, hook it with my finger, make sure it's over the cable, gently lock it into place. We'll make sure you don't trap the cable, but make sure it's poked into the... Uh, the cavity as well and that should hold that in place and obviously you can then run it in one of these channels along to the other side at this stage there's no suggestion uh, about how else to affix this cable so i guess you could put more cable ties along but you need to make sure that nothing's going to snag but this does need to be kept up and run all the way along i'm actually thinking i might i might pop along with a little bit of hot glue just to drop a little drop on here just to kind of create a little place for it to kind of hold it in its position right now we're going to connect up this stepper motor so we should have a short lead short lead and a long lead make sure you use the short lead and connect it up again making sure that the little tab clicks into place nicely and the other one goes the other side right so now we want to secure all these cables to the end of the drag chain using cable ties Right, so we've got one wire left to install, and it's this short stepper motor cable. And this connects on to the X stepper motor. And then this cable, as well as all the others, needs to be fed through this square hole on the side. Now, we will need to cable tie them all here, but I'm going to do that once I've mounted the Duet controller to make sure that I've got everything where it needs to be. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, please join me again for the next instalment where we'll make some further progress. Bye for now.